Okay, so this is my wax hydraulic pipe bender. Uh, when it was in my old shop, I very rarely used it because it was so heavy. It was stuck under the bench and it was such a fag to get in and out. Now I've got the room. I've used it actually a couple of times. Um, so I want to make a stand for it because it's, it's a pain in the ass to keep lifting onto the bench or uh, using on the floor. Now to make the video a bit shorter, I've pre-cut most of the bits and these wheels were, someone chucked a lawnmower in the skip the other day, so I had the wheels off them and the brackets, so that'll make life easier. Um, yeah, one of the problems with the design is that when you're making handles like this type of thing, this is actually a foot pedal for the hammer, it's quite narrow. Um, the arm you bend, or the second arm you try and bend, hits the cylinder. As you bend it, it's sort of sticking out there and it hits there. So the way to get round it is I drop it so it goes underneath the cylinder, which again is a pain in the ass when you've got it on the ground or on the bench. And then I just, once it's it's bent to right size, just pull it, pull it round back to square. Um, so what I'm basically going to do is hang it all off the front and hope that it will be strong enough. I'm sure it will. So let's crack on. I've already drilled one piece because the this is the front piece. There's some lugs under here. All it is is bits of three quarter round welded on. Uh, and I'm just going to drop that if I can get hold of it. Such a cumbersome awkward thing because the top actually comes off so you can get your pipe in and out easier. So let's see if we can drop that in there. I, know, I should take that bolt out. I actually normally have a bolt each end to stop it falling apart. That's it. Right, so that's dropped in there. This is the only part I'm going to have to put together on the machine to get the dimensions right. Now this is another piece of box which just happens to fit perfectly over the spigot that's out the bottom of the bender and then I'm going to weld the two together. As I say I wanted to get it spot on so I'm doing it actually attached to the machine rather than trying to do it by measurement. It's just a bit of a cheat really. Let's put a couple of tacks on it. Nice shot of my backside. Try and measure it up. Now I'm going to speed a lot of this up because um, it's very boring. It's just me welding. So hopefully um, it won't be quite so boring for you. Right, that's about right. Oh, come on. Right, just check it. Yeah, it looks about right. Give it a tack. That's the other trouble, I can't actually see what I'm doing. I think that's got it. So let's take it apart, get the damn thing off the bench and out the way. Of course everything's solid on it and it's uh, it's a bit of a monster. It will bend up to two inch. Um, goes from three eight up to two inch. Um, but unfortunately I'm missing one former but luckily the company is still going they they're in germany um so hopefully i'll be able to to get the one former that i'm missing and of course it's it's one that i use <laughs> on a regular or <clears throat> not on a regular basis but when i use it that's the former i'm 
generally going to use so luckily a friend of mine's got one I keep borrowing it but now I'm using it more often I will actually invest in one I think all right I think that's got it tacked if we can get it out of here it's a relatively tight fit but I wanted that because I don't want it you know, jumping out when I'm using it. So I want it a reasonably tight fit. Let's get a shot of that. Right, so this is going to be the boring bit really. Just a case of welding everything up. It's so nice in this new shop, actually having room to do stuff and do stuff and leave it to one side, like the power hammer. You know, I've, in my old shop, there was no way on this planet I'd been able to build it. Try and get this square. It wasn't, so. <laughs> Redo it. And you'll notice I've got my mask on. It's because this is galvanised, this steel. I have, as you can see in some places, taken the galvanising off. But even so, you still get a bit of fumes. And although it's, it's not harmful, I don't like the headache that it gives me. So this was, as I say, this was dead handy. Someone chucked a lawnmower in the skip, so I had the wheels off it because I was going to buy some casters, the same as the ones I put on the uh, mobile forge uh, stand build. But of course, anything I can save money on is a bonus. The skip that always gives, it's an absolute joy. I don't think anyone knows where half the stuff comes from that ends up in it. But I'm around there virtually every day after something. Right, I'm just going to put a little brace in here. It's not very long, I think it's about a foot, maybe 14 inches long. Um, just to give it a bit of a helping hand. Right, now let's see if we can get the two together. How am I going to do this? Oh no, magnets. These particular magnets, i got a pair of them for I think about a fiver. They're still in the packet and they were one of these offers from somewhere like Lidl. Roldy, and they are really strong and you can put them in all sorts of different directions dead handy right so it's all together basically it's a good job I stood back because I got it the wrong way up let's have a little measure up see how much I'm going to need to level it What's that about? Four and a quarter, four and a bit, four and three eight, 110 mil. That'll do. Let's have a little look in the scraps, see what we can find. So much stuff here. But I think that's the bit I'm going to use. I used that for something else. I can't think what. It's been welded to something. It's got 45 on each end, which will come in quite handy, I suppose. something else I must do, I must get this blade sharpened or some of my other blades sharpened I've got about half a dozen for this but 
they're all pretty blunt. I must send them off. Luckily we've got a company that comes and collects, sharpens them and brings them back. And it's not cheap, but they've got to be done. All right, so that's what I'm going to do with them. Just tack them on the front there. Just to keep the thing, the whole thing level. No, not getting an earth. There we go. Come on, that'll do. I didn't grind the galvanising off this end, so that's why it's splattering and popping back so badly. But never mind. It's about the right height I think this is going to be. I don't want it too high, but I want it high enough that I can rest the pipe on a bench if I've got a long piece of pipe in it. So that's basically it, but there's one more thing I want to put on here. And I've, again, I've been around the skip and I found this bit of tube. Unfortunately, it's not very thick, it's really quite thin, it's only about a mill thick which isn't ideal but it's the only thing I could find that was the right diameter I needed 30 mil diameter so that the dies don't flop about or the formers don't flop about but it'll do for now Grind off a bit of the galvanising. Mark them out. Tack them on. Not fully welding them, just putting a, a biggish tack either side because I say so I might actually change them. So there it is. Now, as soon as I put it together, I realised there was something I should have done, which haven't, but I probably will at some stage, um, and that is put a leg down from the book the back there because it you can see it does wobble a little bit although it is stiff enough to to use um, because I don't always want to bend stuff that needs to go underneath it I will probably put a removable leg in there so that when I'm not bending stuff that needs to go under it it's a lot more rigid I'll I'll figure out a way of just making it temporary sort of clip in and clip out um, other than that, I don't think I'll need to do anything. Maybe put a handle on the end that I can lift it by from under there. But imagine this was your bend. You've, you've done your first bend. You put it in for your next bend. And of course it hits the, the tube or the cylinder. So that's why I drop it, bend it, and it goes underneath quite easily. And then I just put it in the vise. And give it a tweak and it pulls it back up obviously um, I only do it a fairly heavy tube um, there you go another useful tool that can be wheeled around a workshop and got in and out of the way so it's not kicking around under the bench or on the floor so thanks for watching we'll catch you on the next one